Thanks for staying with us through the break. We're in Atchison today. We're joined by Mike Shear at Agri Solutions. We're going to talk about implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill. So, Mike, thanks for joining us. This Thank morning. you. It's great to be here. Um, a lot of decisions being made this time of the year. Uh, more importantly, there are dates that we need to be remembering as we're coming in to March. We're into March now. That's right. Yes. So we just passed a pretty important farm bill deadline. February 27th was the deadline for producers to update their program yields and choose whether or not they wanted to reallocate their base acres. So now that we're past that decision, the next decision on the horizon is making this program election in the farm bill. So producers essentially will be choosing whether to enroll each crop and each farm in either the ARC program or ARC or the PLC program. Uh, ARC is kind of a county level revenue protection program and then the PLC is, is just straight price protection. So that's the decision that's in front of producers right now. Um, I mean that's coming up very soon. I mean we're about two, three weeks away from yeah. that decision. What should a producer be doing to get ready for that decision? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to look at it, and I think a lot of ways in working with producers of how they're trying to attack this decision. So kind of the first main one we're seeing is, is trying to at least put some projection to what these programs expect to pay out. So there's a lot of decision aid tools out there that are available to producers. I know with clients, we've been using the Texas A&M decision aid tool a lot. So you enter in your farm level data, and then it runs some simulations to project out which program looks like the best option for you. So that's kind of one option is trying to get a handle on which of these programs projects to pay me the most over time. Uh, the other approach a producer might take is more just risk management approach, which is like I said one program provides county level revenue protection and one is more of a price floor or price protection. Which of those when I look at my business do I feel like better protects me? So that might be a, another way that a producer might look at this decision. We're talking about a long-term decision. It's a five-year decision that someone has to make. That's right, yes. So whatever program election they make, they will be locked into at least for the next four crop years, and it will uh, impact the 2014 crop year that's already happened. Uh, supplemental, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about that before we came on ca uh, camera. I mean, that's another important option that producers need to look at. That's right, yeah. So another pretty significant program that came out in the Farm Bill is some additional crop insurance coverage that's available. So supplemental coverage option will be available on crops and farms that are not enrolled in that ARC program. So essentially if they're enrolled in PLC, they'd be eligible to purchase this product. Uh, it's a very unique product for us. It's sold through crop insurance agents and it's going to provide some additional coverage for producers that will sit on top of their existing crop insurance coverage. But then it gets triggered actually by the county yield. So like I said, it's very unique, but we think it will provide some value and be a good fit for some producers in, in certain situations. Well, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're going to finish up with Mike Shear at Agri Solutions here in Atchison. We're going to talk about more of the 2014 farm. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. See you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Farmers Insurance, your best protection against the unexpected. Call Agent Dan Key at 785-408-5459. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Blue River Traders, the finest selection of Western-style furniture for your home. BlueRiverTraders.com Thanks for staying with us through the break. We're in Atchison at Agri Solutions, joined by Mike Shear. Mike, thanks for staying with us through the break. Not like you could go anywhere. I've got you kind of <laughs> cornered right. in here. So um, lots of changes, even major changes to crop insurance in the 2014 Farm Bill. Kind of walk us through that. That's right. So yeah, not only these big program decisions, but also some pretty significant changes in crop insurance moving forward as a result of this Farm Bill. So first main program that they released is a program uh, called Beginning Farmer and Rancher. What it does is it provides additional benefits, crop insurance benefits for producers who qualify as a beginning farmer and rancher. So to qualify would be a producer who has had a share in crop or livestock for fewer than five total crop years. Uh, we do get to exclude any years in which that person was under 18 or in active duty military service or enrolled in post-secondary education. Uh, so that's what it takes to qualify. The benefits, there's a few benefits. The main one is an increase in premium subsidy. So that's kind of the thing that gets people most excited usually is uh, cheapening that premium cost, obviously. So that's an exciting program for those that qualify. Uh, probably the biggest change is a new uh, option called APH yield exclusion. 
What that's going to do is allow producers to exclude from their yield history years in which the county yield in that year was lower than 50% of the previous 10 year average. So you look at a year like 2012 was a pretty widespread drought across the state. Uh, uh, most counties on corn at least now, we're going to be able to exclude that particular yield from a database. So in some early work, it's looking like some pretty significant increases in coverage because of that for some pretty modest premium increases with that product. Uh, wheat was excluded. I don't mean to cut you off, but no, wheat was excluded yeah. from that. Was yeah, for, for this crop year, okay. wheat was not included in that. Um, I would expect that looking towards 2016, they will have that implemented. We didn't think it was going to be implemented for any crops for 2015. And then some of the uh, producers in the Oklahoma, Texas area were pretty upset about that. Uh, and it got implemented kind of last minute for 2015. So, but it is a big deal. Yeah. So, uh, Another big, big change that could affect some producers is changes regarding irrigation. So if you have irrigated and non-irrigated acres, moving forward, you'll be able to carry separate coverage levels on irrigated versus non-irrigated and also keep them in separate enterprise units from each other. So. In the past, uh, Enterprise Units throws all the acres of that crop and the county together. Big premium discount for doing that. If you have irrigated and non-irrigated, that didn't work very well. Now they're gonna allow us to keep that separate. Uh, so that's a big benefit for irrigated producers. And then uh, probably the only somewhat negative thing that happened to crop insurance in the Farm Bill is they have tied conservation compliance to premium subsidies. Uh, so that's kind of an issue we're looking at moving forward. It's not going to impact any producers for 2015, but in order to be eligible for 2016, a producer needs to make sure they have a conservation plan on file with FSA by June 1 of 2015. So a real early deadline to get into compliance for 2016. So if a producer has any land that's out of compliance or whatever, they need to make sure that they have that uh, conservation plan in place by June 1, 2015. Perfect, great information. Remember, we got deadlines coming up. Make sure you get with your crop insurance agent or Agri Solutions, and they can answer any questions you might have. Mike, thanks for joining us. This Thank morning. you, Brian. Watch your Kansas Agri Report. We'll see you next week.